Welcome to Scorched Earth and the general reading for the sign of Gemini, <clears throat> Sun, Moon, or Ascendant for the month of February. I hope you are well. I'm using the uh, Llewellyn Tarot for you today. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. If the reading resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that you can access at the end. That's the first link in the description box. <clears throat> The second link in the description box is to the six months overviews that I've done for each of the signs. They run from January to June 2023. So if you're interested in finding out what that period of time has in store for you, you know what to do with that. And the third link is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix, over on Circle. So if you're interested in checking that out, you know what to do. Let's get three cards for Gemini and see what's going on with you. Going on with Gemini. Whoa. So we have <clears throat> the Hanged Man and the Justice card in your recent past. Tell me about the present energy for Gemini, please. Three of Pentacles. And then what is coming towards Gemini for February, please? Thank you. Ooh. We have the chariot. Right. So uh, we have the three of swords at the bottom of the deck. And this one I quite like in the Llewellyn because it's got this kind of aged historic quality to it and a very sepia toned card. It talks to old wounds, old hurts. And the fact that you've had the Hanged Man and the Justice card come out in that recent past position there makes me feel like there is a certain amount of mm, meaning that you are beginning to find. Now, let me get some clarifiers out. And then we'll talk to this specifically. But this looks really good. I'll get that card down there. So, tell me about the Home Man and Justice, please. I'm going to try to fucking run down there. We've got the Six of Wands in the reverse. Some hair stuck to me. Let me flip this around so you can see what I'm looking at more easily. We've got the Home Man and the Justice card, please. Thank you. We have the Hierophant. And the Knight of Swords. There you are, Gemini. Tell me about the Three of Pentacles. We have the Queen of Swords. And we have the Devil. And tell me about the Chariot, please. For Gemini. That's a chariot here. <clears throat> we have the Five of Pentacles. And we have the Page of Pentacles with the Eight of Swords at the bottom of the deck, followed by the Ace of Wands. <coughs> so, like I said, it feels like you're starting to get some sort of perspective on on something that has happened in the past. You know, the, the Three of Swords, this Three of Swords here, it, it lacks the visceral quality, you know, that visual punch that we usually see with the three of swords where there is a red heart and there are swords that are uh, you know puncturing it and for quite a long time well it probably wasn't quite a long time it was probably about a week to be honest i really struggled with the idea of the three of swords meaning what it did when it was a swords card rather than a cups card because as we know when cups represent the emotions well actually they're the vessels that hold the water which is what represents emotions in the tarot <clears throat> whereas the three of swords is about the mental the reasonable the the rational the logical those kind of things until i sort of came to the conclusion that the three of swords represents that point where truth permeates our emotions i mean our emotions can sometimes pull the wool over our eyes but when we see the truth and that truth does penetrate our heart we cannot labour under the same illusions or even maybe delusions that we were labouring under before. And what's quite interesting about this Three of Swords is because there's no depiction of a heart, we have a Three of Swords that are plunged into the ground with, with a raggedy looking woman, or girl actually probably, sitting there next to them. It means that this is something that has happened a long time ago right we're, we're missing that that red meat of the heart right there 
And it's somebody who is sitting with the pain of a long time ago, perhaps affected by the pain of a long time ago, who hasn't quite yet realised that it is possible to stand up and walk away from those swords. I mean, perhaps the... Uh, just put that Eight of Swords there. Perhaps the Eight of Swords is representative of the fact that that action hasn't yet occurred. <clears throat> and the sense that that action is possible has not yet occurred within the brain. But when we come down here, we have the Hanged Man and the Justice Card. And there's two pretty big energies to start off a reading. It's Pisces and Libra, respectively. And the handman talks about uh, a change of perspective. It can talk about submission and it can talk about um, sacrifice. But it talks about a change of perspective most specifically to me, for you here now. And the justice card being, you know, talking about things being in balance for sure, but also a card that has heavy karmic overtones. What we see here is a change of perspective on something that has hurt in the past that is now getting somewhat of um, a do-over in terms of the narrative that is being played out in your head about what this actually is. So we have the six of wands in reverse right here. You know That speaks to a situation where one does not feel like one is winning. And we have this Taurus card of the Hierophant, and we have the Knight of Swords here too, which is Gemini. So we've got you appearing here, and we've got this Hierophant. Now it could be that you have, you know, that, that whatever it is that you're you're dealing with at this point could refer to, uh, it could include a Taurus or a Pisces or a Libra. But I think more so it's this nature of of where one has come from with the Hierophant. We've got, it's one of those cards that speaks to me of heritage and legacy. So what you have inherited and what you're, you know, what is coming out the other side of you effectively, what is the legacy that you are providing for, for the people in your life around you. <clears throat> but because it's got that past association and we see the Knight of Swords rushing into it, it seems like everything's being reordered. Like I said, it's like a, a like a, a taking of the narrative and re rejigging it around, so that you understand the broader karmic implications of the life experience that you've had. You know, the Hierophant's an interesting card. I actually looked up what Hiero meant the other day because I was I just suddenly realised that I didn't know. And it means sacred. Uh, we're, we're comfortable with this idea of the Hierophant being a teacher, but I wasn't quite sure where that association came in other than, you know, he was sat here and he was kind of preaching at acolytes down here. And it's because the Hierophant is essentially a teacher of the sacred. A decoder of the um, of the mystical. We then also have this layer of, of of things being opened up to you, right? New understandings being opened up to you, so that you can, <clears throat> like I said, make sense, find meaning in something that has happened before. Now, uh, this is quite interesting because I think that when something really big and karmic happens, we have a sense of that being the thing, but very rarely do we understand the lesson in the moment. You know, it's something that we have to go away and think about. We have to maybe experience a few more things before lights start coming on in our head. And this seems to me to be where you are uh, right now. You're in that process of decoding. You're in that process of making sense of. Because when we move into your current energy, we've got the Three of Pentacles with the Queen of Swords and the Devil. And this is really quite interesting because in the first instance, it seems to suggest that you are extremely keen to apply these lessons moving forwards. And, and a lot of it is, is to do with the discernment that you apply to the people that you have around you. You know, the people that you trust, the people that you collaborate with, the people that you choose to build things with. Right? It's that high, high level of discernment coming in. 
um, because not everybody is what they portray themselves to be and sometimes when those people that we've spent time around turn out to be karmic teachers of the most painful sort oh my god that going on here it's nice to think that we we could have possibly avoided that when it's not usually the case you know but this experience is the one that has given you the level of discernment moving forward let's see what this devil is about thank you we've got the knight of pentacles and we've got the uh, we've got the empress card And it could well be lessons that you've you've learned from your mother, right? Like certain ways of doing things that you learned from your mother that you are now growing past because they represent for you a way in which you could get trapped. That's possible. But I think that the two cards here together speak more of your capacity to invest in the wrong person or the wrong situation or the wrong thing when you don't understand where it is that you are coming from with something like i said if you haven't yet made sense of the past and particular circumstances and situations that involved a particular set of people you haven't yet got to a point where you've made sense of that your capacity to invest in people and see the good in people um, overrides everything else it, it, it forms at least in this reading, a way in which you can become trapped by things. Now, it would be very easy to blame other people and say, well, you know, they were just awful and all that sort of thing, you know, um, but, but that's missing the broader picture of what's going on here. And instead, <coughs> it's kind of looking at your fears it's looking at the way that you allow yourself to be trapped by situations perhaps how you refuse to see the red flags of the situation or have in the past refused to see the red flags of the situation and then perhaps refuse to do anything about it even when you started to get an inkling of it and that would be because you are not trusting yourself now i'm pretty sure i've just noticed the knight of swords is at the bottom of this deck here too so that's you i'm pretty sure one of the readings that i did for you recently i I can't remember if it was January or December, I think it might have been December, was why are you stifling your own voice? Because here's the thing, I think there have been flags for you on certain things, but your willingness to invest in people, in the good of people, hasn't really taken into account whether they are worthy of their good side. And that can be quite a profound thing to come to terms with because just like the tarot, there's no one person that's all good and all bad, you know. Everybody has something that you might consider to be a redeeming feature. But when we put all of our energy into the redeeming feature and we fail to notice the rest, that's where our discernment sort of swivels off and doesn't really serve us anymore. <clears throat> if we actually do notice the red flags and there's an opportunity to stand up and say uh, why is this happening you know challenging it in some sort of way and you don't take it which I feel like is part of the issue in the past that you have not taken it you have not used your voice you have not or perhaps not even used your voice effectively because perhaps you did try to use it but you were shouted down or maybe gaslit quite a lot where you see that with the devil card you know it, it's about coming to a place where within you you are the authority no one else gets to shoehorn or browbeat you into doing something that you don't want under the guise of unity and working together and collaboration cooperation all that kind of thing because ultimately you know your card is represented by by the lovers that's the card of gemini and that does talk about union and harmony it talks about two people coming together it talks about free will and talks about choice but the interesting thing is that structurally that card is exactly the same as the devil card 
And in fact, in a numerological sense, we've got 15 here, which reduces down to six, which brings you to the lovers. And so the idea here for me is that one side of this is being trapped and being stuck because we have given our power away to other people. We've been under the illusion that perhaps they were the expert, but perhaps they knew more than we did. You know, perhaps they are uh, you know, more worthy of making decisions than I am because I, you know, I don't know as much, whatever. And it's led you to a place where you walked into that with your free will, but then found yourself unable to escape again. You know, the, the chains that are around the necks of the naked people here are actually very loose. And if they wanted to, they could take them off. But the devil gains his power by way of illusion. And the devil will get stronger the more you give your power over. Because he has no power of his own. He's like a fucking government in that respect, right? <clears throat> Government only works because everybody everybody believes it works. Right? Because everybody, apparently, at some point, consents to be governed. They also don't create any money of their own, right? It's that same thing. It's all a fucking illusion right here. But your card, the lovers, is about free will, free choice, autonomy. The ability to be able to make decisions for yourself. somewhere along the line it wasn't taken from you it was given by you to somebody else and however prettily the devil might you know make the situation look ultimately he is still the devil and it is all still an illusion so there's a coming to truth going on here and that truth has to be an understanding that you have an authority and you know what you choose to do with that, whether you choose to pass it off to somebody else or whether you choose to take it within yourself and, and really be guided by that, is entirely up to you. <coughs> but I think it's probably been a heavy lesson that you've, you've stumbled across this last month or so, very much in the energy of it right now. Unlike Gemini or you, you know, as you are, <clears throat> you're kind of going around this ball of something that you've discovered and you're poking it and you're prodding it. And what's this? I don't know. What does it sound like? You know, rattling around. You know, is it heavy? Is it like looking for a way in? And I think you're pretty much there. I think you're pretty much there. Because when we move into... February, we have the chariot. Now, this is a glorious card because uh, I think as of today, definitely as of today, it might have been a couple of days ago, we have Uranus going direct. It was the final planet that was in retrograde and this retrograde season, season has been a little bit sludgy. I, I think most of you will agree. All planets are going direct and they are direct for three months. This is an opportunity to make some really, really big changes. And I think that that a lot of big changes will be happening outside of you. They will be to your external environment. But they will be merely a reflection of what is going on inside of you. And it's quite unusual to have all the planets direct for three months solid. It's a huge time of change. More than that, it's a huge time of getting out in front of the changes that are going to be thrust upon us come April, May sort of time when the outer planets shift signs so i love the fact that we've got the chariot here for you it's cancer card and it talks about balance <coughs> amongst other things it can talk about balance but it really is the forward motion you know when the chariot card appears we have somebody who has a plan and who knows how they're going to get there you know you know the direction of travel you know exactly you know how many days worth of supplies you need to pack to be able to get to where you're going your horses are well rested your emotions are much stronger than they have been before i love this card it's the only chariot card that i've got where there's water depicted on it i mean there's two horses here and this one's so far in the water it looks like it's made of water maybe it is because it's it could well be indicating the strength and balance of your emotions now that enable you to move forwards in a way that you have found more difficult in the past. You know, if you are letting go of a particular 
narrative that you've been telling yourself for quite a long time, if you are truly starting to see things differently, then you are pulling your power back from the devil and allowing yourself to exercise it in the way that you should because the lovers is your card. It's an authentic expression of your energy. But we see here the five of pentacles and then the page of pentacles. Now the five of pentacles represents, I think, let's look at it like this in fact. We've got a bit of a story going on here as it is. Because the five of pentacles is what allowed you to be in this state in the first place. It's what put you here. It was a way in which you have not met your own basic needs, right? You were perhaps completely oblivious to your own basic needs because maybe you put the well-being of the group ahead of you. And by group, that could be family, it could be friends, could be work colleagues, to take it as it resonates to you, members of your coven. Yeah. Or it simply could be that you haven't had the ability to be able to articulate what it was that you did need. I think that you have a much better idea of that now and the five of pentacles representing, you know, what was, has the chariot card and the page of pentacles representing what could be. In fact, it probably makes even more sense like this, right? Because the page of pentacles there is about discovering something of value. And ultimately that, that almost always is something about you. It's a new point of investment. I mean, look at the page here, like he's found this pentacle. It's like, holy shit, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I want more of this. How do I get more of this? And he dedicates his life, his attention. He invests in whatever that pentacle represents. And it, it's given to be a new start, right? It's taking something that you already have and moving it off in a different direction. And because it's pentacles, it's definitely time and care and effort and money. All those things could be your love as well. You know, taking that which already exists and going, I'm going over here with all of this thing. Because I've got a goal in mind. I've got somewhere that I want to go. There are successes that I want to experience because the chariot card is very much about victory too. Like this. <clears throat> wow. And we have, fuck, we have the Six of Cups at the bottom, uh, uh, just hopped out of the deck there, and we have the Lovers at the bottom of the deck. We're transitioning from Devil Energy into Gemini Lovers Energy. This is so bright. The, these energies here in February are so bright. And it's come from the meaning that you've taken, finally, from the way that you've changed the narrative about what has happened in the past. There's such a, such a light energy about you now because what you absolutely will not do is go backwards. The Six of Cups talks about the past. It talks about childhood, right? But it can talk about actually going back to something, usually from an emotional perspective. Six of Cups in reverse is an absolute refusal to go back to something. Oh, why would I go backwards? I'm not going that way. I'm going forwards. The chariot says that you're going forwards. So whether you are working on some sort of project or whether this is speaking to the relationships that you have that are around you, this is a period of... I would say almost that where you've been here has been a period of consolidation. I mean, here is the lesson starting to, to you know, percolate through your mind. Here's the part where you were processing it right there and now we have this new level of resolve that is appearing where you are actually being true to you you are exercising your free will and you don't give anybody an opportunity to get a look in on this one it's a very healing energy that i'm seeing around you here gemini <clears throat> but whatever you've been waiting for a sign for if you have been waiting for a sign I feel like this is it. You know, you're probably the third sign now that I've read for that's had a very distinct go kind of signal about it. And this is it. Once you've understood the lesson, when you've taken from it what you needed, allowing yourself to be yourself in all situations 
and assert yourself and do all of the things. I mean, the, the chariot card is the card of the self right there. So anything that you can prefix self onto becomes something that is represented by the chariot. So self-discipline, self-motivation, self-belief. These are all qualities that are covered by the chariot card. But even knowing thyself So whatever you are working on, whatever is important to you right now, whatever has you showing up really authentically, it's time to put everything that you've got into that because there are some huge moves that can be made here for you. And February is just the start. I mean, February is the start of it, but to be honest, this started long, long before that. And I think you're starting to see that now. But in terms of the changes that are being, you know, getting ready to be made in the outer world, I really do feel like your inner place is has reached that point where it's ready to start making some big shifts outside of you. Oh, well, I'm going to go over to Vimeo now. And we're going to pull February apart and see what's going on because because um, you feel like a bit of a powerhouse during this month, and I'm just really nosy, so I'd like to see what's going on there, and we'll give you some advice <clears throat> if you need it. And you should use your own discernment about whether you choose to take it or not. You should only do it if it feels right to you. But if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. It's not a problem. Just know that this shift that's been happening in you for quite a while, it feels like it's solidifying this month. And from here, all things are possible because you got into an energy of conscious co-creation. You are where you're supposed to be. So from here on out, what do you want to create? What are you working on? What are you trying to build into existence? And who are you doing it with? Because like I said, I think you've got very much more discerning about who you choose to spend your time with. So let's do that. I hope that helped. Know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.